Classic Villacobamba, Ecuador. Too exhausted from plant medicine and hilarity, philosophical musings to sit up. So I've decided to make this video laying in the grass. <laughs> I realized that uh, I haven't said much about Yopo, Wilco, Cahoba. This is a visionary snuff, um, arguably the uh, longest um, in use known to mankind, although I think mushrooms give it a run for its money um, in terms of the possible, but I think proven because it's in a pipe and someone obviously smoked it. Like we have cave drawings of people holding mushrooms that we think suggest that the use might go back further. Either way, super ancient plant medicine, um, basically made from the seeds of either the Seabull tree or um, one of the Paraginas. Uh, Columbina, or yeah, my Latin's probably terrible, but um, the Huilco tree. Uh, and actually, this valley here, Vilcabamba, gets its name from this um, from this tree. And so they're little red seeds, and uh, you grind up a few of them, mix them traditionally, as I do, with a giant snail that's been heated to 900 degrees and pulverized. And um, then you snort this mixture. A half a gram of it or so it's not easy into your nostrils and honestly I was expecting maybe some colors and you know to laugh about this and move on with my life and I was shocked I had laid down and there was just this rapidly morphing yellow red just crazy overwhelming sort of circus vibe and you know the character of DMT obviously is very present and Remember I set up and looked in the backyard and there are all these ancient like Toltec statues unfolding out of the grass and stuff and I'm like, oh man, I have really done it this time. And I started to feel kind of queasy so I stood up and like didn't quite vomit and looked around. My girlfriend came up, are you okay? Did it work? <laughs> yeah, it worked. Um, so uh, at any rate, <clears throat> um, over time I got a little bit more comfortable with this medicine and um, I didn't, I didn't really understand it for a while though, honestly. It didn't have this presence of Pachamama like ayahuasca. The visions are very similar. But I felt like it was just kind of pointless, you know, like, okay, it shows you all this weird tendrily stuff and exploding designs and it was like, that's cool, but I'm not really gaining much from this, so why go through it, you know, like, what's the point? And um, the Yopo actually did answer me and it answered me in a very profound way by starting the experience before I took the seeds and ending it the next day after its effect had obviously worn off. And that was what was really extraordinary about it. And of course it took me a while to even realize that that's what had happened. And so um, I had been talking with my girlfriend's father about the effects of Yopo. And I described these beings as like this matrix of consciousness that are everywhere and everything and they kind of have tendrils and they're like you know, they have an individual existence, but they also overlap, and so they're kind of egoless, and they're all sort of like one thing, but then they also are individual, which is how I think of the human race, too. It's like, you know, one soul divided that union may come or whatever, but to my surprise, uh, my girlfriend's father said, uh, yeah, it's always there or something to that effect, and we just don't notice it or something, and I, I thought that was weird because he's never had Yopo, and he seemed to know exactly what I was talking about, so... At any rate, I think the next night we uh, we did a rather large dose of Yopo, my girlfriend and I, and um, I've never heard her sing before in my entire life, and we sang Amazing Grace suddenly in pretty much perfect spot-on harmony. And so I started to think, well, maybe that's the lesson of Yopo, you know, just sing. And then uh, she set up and started singing Icaros, Icaros in a... Uh, just the perfect, you know, the way I understand these interdimensional beings, the language, the syllables, everything was perfectly the way that it would be if some shaman from, you know, Brazil or wherever deep in the jungle, um, it was it was identical. And uh, to my knowledge, she's never even heard these songs before. So that raised my eyebrows. And then a little while later, suddenly she lays down and she says, I can talk to the cat. And I thought, we have gotten way too high. And she does indeed have a cat that is a little bit impersonal. It'll, it will come up and lay on your knees and on your, you know, but not really get in your face too much. And as soon as she says this, the cat comes right into her face and starts making these crazy, meow, meow, you know, all these ridiculous sounds. 
My girlfriend's doing the same thing back at the cat. I'm watching this whole thing after she has just told me that she can talk to the cat, thinking, you know, okay. And then so the cat, I, I don't even know how to describe this, totally unnatural. Like it twisted its head around and buried it upside down in the blankets. And like it was all sad, you know, I could tell that the cat was really upset about something. The girl starts bawling. And I'm watching all of this going, not terribly surprised, to be honest, you know. It's not like this sort of thing is, like, that far beyond what I would entertain as, you know. And, of course, the skeptic would say, well, you're just high, but no, go fuck yourself, you know. This is... <laughs> I actually, let me mention something as, as, as an addendum here, a little side note. Uh, some, some, what are they called, like, neurobiologists, uh, or, you know, people that study scientists with the brain, um... Some of them that have experience with psychedelics have suggested that what these psychedelics do is actually bring down filters that screen out all of these aspects of reality so that we can function. Because, you know, we only process 1% of the light and, you know, if we were taking in everything, we could see all the energy fields, we could understand all the other animals and consciousness that's actually being picked up by our brain, we would not be able to do anything. So psychedelics temporarily bring down these filters. You're not imagining anything. None of this is drugs. It's not hallucinations. It's all really there. If you have seen something and then you come up with some dumb idea about it, that is a hallucination. Your dumb idea about what you were looking at, not the thing you were looking at. That was some massive energy that's really there and probably will become whatever you think it is. But it was really there, you know, in some sense of the word. Um, so now that we've addressed that, we can move on to what happened later, which is probably, you know, it's as weird as any of the rest of the story. The next day, I ran into my neighbor. Um... And the first thing he says to me is, you know, has it ever occurred to you that consciousness is just like this one field and like a dog is, you know, just an aspect of this one consciousness and that we could actually communicate with any part of it? You know, we just have this illusory thing where we think that it's like something separate or whatever. And I just kind of carried on like, well, of course that's, you know, of course, dude, you know, listen to what happened last night, you know. Um, but later I realized that it's almost as if the Yopo was speaking through my girlfriend's father before I took it, and this message that it was trying to communicate with me was coming out of the neighbor when I saw him first thing in the morning. And so, and so I feel like that just goes to sort of substantiate everything that I'm saying about how, you know, these are not hallucinations. There's a, there's a bigger thing communicating to us, and if we have the proper respect and we remember to listen before and after, these plant medicines are communicating extraordinary things to us. We must have eyes to see and ears to hear with humility and respect. Like, subscribe.